my name is Elgin James, and uh, I'm a filmmaker. Yeah, I grew up, um, I grew up uh, kind of tough circumstances when I was a kid, and uh, in a really kind of violent and abusive household. Um, and uh, that sort of led me, it's funny because I had, uh, I had a lot of nervous tics. I was so terrified of the world when I was a kid. I was like so scared. And there didn't seem to be any sort of like sense of justice. There didn't seem to be any sort of sense of order by any means. You didn't know. You're just this. And um, <clears throat> kind of left by the wiles and emotions and uh, um, moods of uh, adults, you know, who could be terrifying. And the only time that I didn't have the tics was when I'd watch a movie. And, uh, or read a book, really. And it was my mom, Beta, who had, who had adopted me that really figured that out. And so it always kind of became my escape. And uh, I ended up on the streets for a while, starting when I was a teenager. And that always just became my escape. Like, film became my escape. And I was, me and my best friend, uh, we'd be, you know, living in an abandoned building. And I'd pretend, like, oh, dude, I, go, I, I just met this girl. I got to go hang out with her, man. I'll be right back. And then I'd go to like an art house cinema and watch these movies, you know, but I was so embarrassed of it. But that was like me, you know, in the same way with books, you know, I'd always keep books like hidden under my mattress or my sleeping bag and stuff. So I was so embarrassed. I don't want to find out that I had like a John Steinbeck book or something, you know. And, um, <clears throat> and that was that. So it was, it was sort of like, even in the darkest of dark, and I definitely, you know, I think there's a time where you can go one way or the other. And I definitely went down. I definitely chose a dark path for a long time, for decades of my life. And you all that think when the world has done a bunch of stuff to you and then you start doing a bunch of stuff to the world back to try to gain this sense of justice. And I just thought the, uh, that part, the part that I try to keep so hidden, the vulnerable part, the vulnerable part and um, I guess what would be the creative part that I was so embarrassed of and ashamed of, uh, once I got out of that life, it was still there, you know, which I, which I guess we all have, you know, so I was so amazed by, and, uh, and that's how I became a filmmaker. You know, you grow up, and like I said, sometimes the people that are supposed to lead you have their own demons, you know, and, uh, and it just obviously keeps this cycle going, and then you grab your own demons for yourself and pass them on, and so on and so forth, and... It wasn't until literally that I got out of, it was because my mom had died. That's really what kind of catapulted me out of that life because I was with her on her deathbed. I spent the last few weeks with her and I'd give her nothing to be proud of at all. You know, I was just like a loser in a gang at that point. And, um, and so I made promises to her that I was going to change my life. Everything was going to be different. And, you know, you make deathbed promises to your mom. You're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. This is it. And... Then I stayed where I was living in Boston, and I just couldn't do it. You know, I tried to, and then you get a three, you know, call at three o'clock in the morning from your brothers that need you, and I was, I had to go. That was loyalty. That was my family. It was a very intense time. I had, I, what time I'd come to LA, and I was trying to do different projects and figure out. I'd never written a screenplay before. I didn't know anything about movies really, except that I wanted to be part of them. I wanted to tell stories. Because I really feel like movies had saved my life. You know, everyone's like, ah, oh, film, you know, it's not rocket science, you know, but, or it's not brain surgery, but it still saved my life. You know what I mean? It was the only thing that got me through. It was the only time I could sit in a dark theater and not feel so alone in the world, you know? And that's what I wanted to be part of. And I wanted to be part of it telling my own story. And then people came to me about, hey, we should make a movie about your life. And... I was having a hard time at the time. So I, I mean, I was like, this is amazing. This is awesome. Making movies is so easy. This is great. And I have this A-list actor and this A-list -A -list director and these very smart writers. And I wasn't going to write or direct. I was just sort of the guy they brought, you know, they shuffled into the room and then shuffled out. And, uh, but at the time, having lived a life since I was a child, a very young child, like surrounded by violence and then being part of violence, I didn't know how I felt about it all. And they're trying to basically shimmy the story down into something very clear cut, which is like we were Robin Hood kids out doing these positive things and look at us. And, <clears throat> and there is justice in the world. And the story wasn't that simple. You know, the story, there's much with anything. Once you try, we were trying to do, or I was trying to do, I can only speak for myself, um, unjust acts to try to bring about justice, you know, or what I thought Maybe they were more immoral acts because they were violence against people I thought who were immoral and I thought that would balance itself out. And um, 
So I didn't know how I felt about the violence and people were dying. And so I just knew that this is not something I want to pass on to other people. You know, I didn't want to keep that cycle going that people could look, look up to that. And not in a way of just be demeaning my past either because I still have the same beliefs. You know, I'm the same situations. I'm sure I would still do the same things. I just keep myself out of those circumstances. I walked away from that, um, uh, from that project, right? And I'm like, I want to tell the story myself and figure out how to do it. And then I wrote this film, Little Birds, which is about me and my best friend. But I turned this into 15-year-old girls instead to so kind of like still address violence, but in a very different way. And talk more about what was more important, which is like our friendship, our friendship, you know, and the emotions behind that. And um, so after, after doing that, that's when I uh, came into Robert Redford and the Sundance Labs. And that's when my whole life changed, you know, and they were like, it was insane to sit across from Robert Redford and then also the actor Ed Harris, and they were basically, for the first time, I had like positive male role models in my life. And it was crazy, because here I am in my 30s, but I finally have these, these are who I want to grow up to be. I spent my whole life not knowing what a man was supposed to be. I thought a man was supposed to be something that caused so much damage and havoc. You know, like I said, me and my friends were just boys without dads, really. Even if the dads were there, they weren't really dads. And then I had these men, I'm like, this is who I want to grow up to be, and they're so, Obviously they're men, but they're also just so in touch with their creativity and their vulnerability. And they kept pushing me to go further and further. And Robert Redford especially uh, just called me out on all my stuff and uh, about violence, about my past, about everything, just pulled my card and just basically like, you're still, you know, you're kind of, you're stunted. These things happen to you as a seven year old child and you're still stuck there. And you went from a seven year old child to then a 22 year old child or man and it's, you know, child in a man's body causing all this havoc and damage. He's like, and that's not gonna bring you to an artist. Like you try to do these things, but still, it just brought you further and further down. You want to get, need to get past all of that to your truth and your vulnerability. Don't pay attention to what your dad may have done to you. Let that go, but pay more attention to what your mom did, who she, she was a pacifist and a Quaker, and just how she lived her whole life by her morals quietly. And um, so this amazing, so obviously you hear that from anybody, but here from Robert Redford, like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? But if real life was a movie, it was like your brothers that would be there, whoever. And, uh, and when I looked around, those were the people that were around. You know, it was this little English girl named Juno Temple that was still there, it was my producers. It was Brian Grazer, the day of my sentencing, not knowing how long I was gonna go to prison for, uh, paid me, had me sign a contract and paid me to write a screenplay so my wife would have money while I was in prison the whole time and I'd have something to look forward to another way out. So the only reason like we're here together is just through mentors. The only reason that we're here is because of other people that were generous enough to see because there was nothing on paper to say that I had any sort of worth. You know, there's actually on paper, <laughs> there's lots and lots of documents that I was worthless and still people were generous enough to see some something in me. I still don't know what it is, but so, that, so back to your question, uh, it was insane. So I was sentenced to prison, but at the same time, like this person had taken the stake in me and put the stake in me and my voice and made me feel important. That my voice was important to get out into the world. And, um, and that was one of the reasons why you just keep getting up, you know, because you keep falling. You know, you make it up to this next level of like, oh man, I'm a filmmaker, but you just still fail every day. You fall on your face every day. But the reason why I get up are for those people who believed in me. As far as publicity, I'm always going to be, not always, because that's exactly what I want not to be. I want the conversation to move on from just being the ex-gang member who's now a movie maker, you know, but still understand that that's what people are going to want to talk about. Like the meeting I discussed earlier, that's what they want to talk about for 20 minutes. But I'm going to give you an honest answer about it. You know, I'm not going to, that's not going to become my persona. People were very, very surprised. Uh, some people, I think, very, very disappointed when Little Birds premiered. And uh, it was not a movie about a bunch of guys, you know, robbing, and though there was some guys robbing in the movie, but that's not what it was about. It was about these two 15-year-old girls, the end of their friendship. But when people started to post about it, you know what I mean? When like someone would post like their own scars, like on Instagram, we you know split screen with a scene from Little Birds or talk about it, you know, or make their own posters from it. That's when it was like, that's it, you know? Or uh, someone posted uh, on their Instagram, a poster that they'd made for Little Birds, but then the rest of her posts were all like her in this small town with her sheep and with her pigs. That's exactly how I grew up, you know? So I mean, my whole thing is like, I'm, I'm broken. Like, I, I think we all have this wreckage inside of us and that's what I want to put on the film, just 
just because you have to get it out as an artist as you know you have to whether it's inside of you whether the world wants it or not you need to get it out and when the people so I was not so worried of the people who did not have that getting it, but the people who also have their own wreckage recognizing themselves in that, that meant more than, to me than anything else in the world. That's the whole point of this is you do it so you don't feel so alone in the world. It's like this, a voice crying out into this like, this is gonna sound dramatic, but it's true and you're like, it's dark and you're in the wilderness and you yell out and then all of a sudden from way off you hear a voice back and there's no greater feeling in the world. I guess if I had to tell someone who's either in my positions that I was in in the past, or just no matter what position, whether it's that or something else right now, whether you're sitting very comfortably <laughs> right now, no matter what it is, it's just the fact that you can do it. If anyone can do it, like, I mean, sorry, if I can do it, anyone can do it. You know what I mean? The fact that I've been where I've been and was able to tell, you know, or able to tell the stories that I'm telling, it just really proved that you can change your life around. I was way past my expiration date, you know what I mean? I was so surprised. Everyone thought I was gonna die by the time I was 16. You know, and then I'm next, then you grow up and you're 25 and you're like, what do I do? I wasn't supposed to be here. You know, I just continue doing worse things and worse things. And the fact that I'm here now, that's just it, is just figure out what your truth is and don't let anybody sway you because they're gonna try to. Everyone's gonna try to. And the fact, it's so hard when you're off on your own beat and everyone's going one way, but your one beat is what's gonna inspire others. You know what I mean? It's like that, the thing inside of you and like I said even just like to go do like a heartbeat maybe like our heartbeats just changed a little bit different has a little like little timpani drum in it or something compared to everybody else's but that's we're so embarrassed of that we're so ashamed of that we want to hide that that's what's going to make you soar you know that's what's going to make you fly just your own actual individual voice and that's what to say just do stuff put it out into the universe you know whether it's big or small just do it and do it right now put pen to paper take a camera do something no matter what it is um, I don't know what business or something would be, but do that, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Just whatever you feel inside of you, just put it out and you're going to get laughed at, you're going to get judged, and then later those same people are going to call you a genius, and they're going to talk about how they knew you back then. <laughs>